What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a review for you of the iMac 24-inch 2021 with M1 processor, and this is after a month of use. So this right here is Apple's brand new redesigned desktop, and when it was first announced, it came in all the crazy colors, and people were really fascinated by it as to where it fit in the lineup, how much power it had with the M1 chip, and also just whether or not it was more so for like consumers to do like admin work or like general productivity, or if it was something that like creatives and video professionals could also utilize as well and really benefit from for such a portable all-in-one machine that looks very minimal and stylish. So obviously one of the biggest things is that it comes in a lot of colors, up to seven of them in the upgraded model and four of them in the base model. And the one that I had from Apple was actually a blue one, which I thought looked pretty good and was super stylish. But honestly, I'm kind of boring and I just like a black or silver one. So I actually like that computer so much that I went ahead and ordered one for myself. So the specs that I've been using are the M1 with 16 gigs of memory, and it is the upgraded model that has four of the USB Type-C or Thunderbolt ports, as well as two terabytes of internal storage so it is essentially maxed out and I've got to say even though I knew what I was getting into in terms of power and just how much the M1 was able to offer after using the Mac mini and also the MacBooks this has actually become one of my main editing computers when it comes to doing like 5k resolution editing and Final Cut Pro 10 a little bit of DaVinci as well and it has totally been able to handle it so starting out on the design you can just see that this computer is so thin it looks really really cool and when you like the different colors it can really blend into a certain space or theme that you're going for and essentially what Apple has wanted to do with this computer is replace a 21 and a half inch iMac by reducing the bezel sizes and the overall footprint is still relatively small small compared to like the 27 inch or obviously any larger setup that you might be used to if you have a desktop before. It is like just like a nice thin computer that can either sit on like a dining table, a living room, a bedroom or a dorm and it all comes in at a weight of just 10 pounds and even though some people were like kind of making fun of the fact that I said I could take this on travel, it is honestly a computer that is light enough that with the proper case I'm sure it's something that I may want to take in the future as we start to do more work on the go. On the front though, you might notice that it has white bezels, which is something that Apple hasn't done in a really long time, but it does seem like the lineup might be heading that way with the next generation MacBook Air embracing that same design and color scheme as well. And I think this one right here in the silver color with the white front and the chin as well, overall looks quite minimal, but I do feel like the chin without the Apple logo does feel a little bit odd. And in some cases, I would say depending on the color that you get with like the pastel and like the harsher metal color may look a little bit strange. So even though they made this computer look extremely thin, I almost feel like they didn't have to. The iMac is a desktop computer, so you don't really look at what is on the back. So even though it is nice that it's like a whole like uniform piece and it shows off the amount of power that the M1 is able to have without needing a lot of space and the fact that it can fit into an iPad as well, it's just like a testament to Apple's engineering and overall I think they've done a good job, but I do feel like if it was thicker and was able to get rid of the chin overall, I think it would actually look a lot better. But obviously with Apple's intention of this computer essentially being able to go everywhere and looking very seamless, but at the same time being sort of an art piece, I feel like they have accomplished their mission with the design. And I actually plan to put this in my dining room. So just to recap, the color options are silver, orange, blue, green, purple, and also red. And after seeing all of them in person, I think the blue one obviously looks really, really good. It's just one of my favorite colors. If you like purple, that one also looks quite sharp. And the yellow is also pretty interesting as well. But if you had to ask me whether I like a white bezel or a black bezel, even though all the walls around my house are white, I would still probably choose a black one. Apple is also very consistent in the design of this computer. The color scheme and everything all syncs together. There's like a magnetic power connector on the back that is a singular cable and also supplies the ethernet through the power brick. And all the colors are matching. It is all nicely braided. And even the USB type C to lightning cable that you use to charge a keyboard and the mouse is all color matched. And this right here is obviously like a blending color with the touch ID, but because I got the silver one, it's probably what you're used to seeing before. But I also had the blue one for a bit and I just like the fact that they've had that nice touch of blending all the colors together to have that nice uniform look. But now onto the display, and this is where I feel like the whole value aspect of the iMac does come together. You look at the price of the Mac mini and also like the iMac all together, for what you're getting for such a great display and an all-in-one unit that looks like this, it makes the iMac a very compelling 
compelling option for anyone looking for a new computer. It has a 24 inch 4.5K retina display that has a P3 wide color gamut as well as true tone and 500 nits of brightness. And although on paper that sounds like pretty similar to all the other iMacs that are currently on the market, I will say one observation compared to like the 5K iMac is that the colors are just a little bit more dull when comparing it side by side. To be totally honest though, and to put things into perspective for the price, it is a great display. And if you were to go ahead and buy a monitor on its own that had these specs, it would exceed the price of the whole setup with a Mac mini and not look as good. It is a really good screen, but if you're like someone in like the production field or creative who has used even higher end displays, then you are gonna notice that the colors are just not as pronounced. Before I move on though, I wanna give a huge thanks to Setup for sponsoring this video and their suite of apps that really allow you to make the most of your brand new iMac or any Mac computer that you have. Setup is a large collection of powerful Mac apps available by subscription, which gives you a great price to be able to access a ton of these applications that would usually cost you a lot of money if you were to go ahead and get them individually. One of my favorite programs that a lot of you have actually asked about in past videos is iStat Menus. And what this gives you is crucial information about your computer and just everything that you could know from the technical side based on the load that you're putting on it and also the general performance info. Once you've downloaded it, you can go ahead and completely customize your dashboard to the different colors and the different parameters of information that are useful to you. From there, you can just go ahead and hover on the top bar, and as you can see, I have info on the GPU, the CPU, the temps, the fan, and all the things that I would want to know about a high-performance computer. A few other great utilities that are worth checking out include MoneyWiz, which allows you to really take control of your personal finances in a very visual appealing form, as well as Sheet Planner, which allows you to be more organized with your workflow and business. If you guys want to go ahead and check it out for yourself, Setup has a whole collection of apps that are all very, very useful, and I've used ones in all different ranges. Some of them are down to like storage management and Mac maintenance. There are also security ones, uh, photography apps such as Luminar, and just a ton of things that you're able to use at a cost of just $9.99 a month. So if you guys want to go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm going to leave a link on screen and in the description section down below. When it comes to the performance side of things though, and the options that you can go with, it starts out at a price of $12.99. And that comes with an eight core CPU and also a seven core GPU, and it has one fan instead of two. When it comes to the options and performance though, the base price starts out at $12.99, and that includes two Thunderbolt ports, as well as an eight core CPU and seven core GPU, as well as one internal fan. Whereas if you go up to the upgraded model of $14.99, you get a total of four ports, which I think is very handy. And you also have an eight core CPU and GPU, as well as two fans, meaning it is able to operate at a higher clock performance. To be totally honest with you, as I've said, at the base price, it is a great value. And I feel like the entry point is something that Apple has been doing a lot of. And for a lot of people, that might be all you need. But I do feel like having two ports is relatively limiting and that you should upgrade to the four port option just because with the improved cooling as well as the extra GPU core and the two ports as well, the $200 does seem to make a lot of sense. You also don't get the gigabit ethernet integrated in the power cord. So although I do think if you really are on a budget crunch, the 1299 one is still a really good option. If you can, there is quite a bit of value in the step up. You also have to pay an extra 50 bucks to get the touch ID integrated to the keyboard if you got the base model. So after having this computer for a month and doing a whole bunch of things on it, whether it is like just like light accounting, going through like databases and like web-based stuff, answering emails, doing conference calls, and just like the everyday like admin kind of thing that I would usually do on a laptop, as well as like video editing, color grading, and all that kind of stuff that really does push the power to the max. What is my experience of the power that the M1 iMac is able to provide? And I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed, but at the same time, after trying the M1 Mac mini, I was already knowing what performance expectations to get out of it. But the big question that I did have is, right now, when you look at the Apple lineup, the Mac mini is one that is obviously a compelling option for creatives, but if I wanted an all-in-one computer and didn't really want to wait for the iMac Pro or the M1X chip or whatever that might come out later in the year or not ship till next year, is this a computer that you can do all your work on if you just demand a little bit more power than the average? Average user? And the answer to that is yes. I was able to do all my video editing perfectly fine 
with like a couple crashes here and there, but I also have to remember that I'm editing 5K video content that is like 20 to 30 minutes in length, and that is definitely a lot to throw at a computer that isn't specifically made to curate to a professional user. Beyond that though, I also did photo editing on this computer in Photoshop and Lightroom, and everything was able to just work really, really well. But when I first got the computer, I definitely had questions as to how it was able to cool itself just because it is so thin and the back doesn't have like any vents or anything. If it had like the vent system that like the Pro Display XDR had, I would have understood um, that that was kind of their cooling system. But in this case, I was like, when you look at the back of the computer itself, it is just like a singular slab and almost looks like a large iPad. So before I get like way too off topic in like the production side of things and the stuff that I do on an everyday basis, the bottom line is if you're looking to run like everyday tasks and like productivity work and like maybe some school work as well, you're gonna have no problem in terms of the power that this computer is able to provide because it is all definitely there. But I do think even if you don't need like the additional power of the one extra GPU core or like the extra fan, I would still say the $1,499 upgraded model is worth the money. So obviously with the home work from home thing, a lot of people are using Zoom, conference calls, and all these kind of things that need a front facing camera. And it does seem like an area that Apple is really focused on. Not only on like FaceTime group calls and what they've done through iOS 15, what they've also done on the iPad M1 with the technology that's able to track where you are in the screen through machine learning. But the iMac 2021 also has the improved camera sensor that is 1080p with some ISP features that are thanks to the M1 chip. So essentially what ISP stands for is an image signaling processor, which means it is able to process the image more effectively, giving you a better image. There's a whole bunch of like algorithmic tech behind it, giving you better white balance, dynamic range, and all that kind of stuff. But from the first day that I did a conference call on this iMac, in my living room where there was like windows from the side to the back, and it was facing the sun, I was surprised by just how well it was able to process the image and just fully keep me in focus, but also everything well exposed and balanced. The camera is actually so good that Apple did some demonstrations of like filming web video and tutorials on the iMac display. But I do think one missing feature that I would have liked to have seen integrated is the one that they've done on the iPad, which is something that is able to keep you in frame as you walk around. Because say you have this computer in your dining room or living room, which Apple did demonstrate, and I personally do that as well, which I thought was a bit weird at first. I feel like that is definitely a cool feature to have that worked really well on the iPad and would be cool for like casual chats. There's also actually a three microphone array built in as well with beamforming technology, which is able to pick where you are in the center frame just to give it the best audio experience and microphone quality possible. Even though the microphone quality is pretty good from my testing, it is definitely not like anything impressive. And I didn't really notice anything crazy when compared to the other mics that I've used on Apple computers, especially from the desktop side. It definitely does sound better and a little bit sharper and it keeps you in focus. And even though I know like my quality is not exactly always important, as long as you're able to hear each other. I do think that like, even though it is a big selling feature, it isn't something to go out and buy the brand new iMac for. On the topic of sound though, this computer has a six speaker system. It consists of subwoofers as well as the amplifiers. It also has support for spatial audio and Dolby Atmos. So you can really hear the separation in the sound, even though it does seem like all the audio is coming out of like a very uniform and tight setting. From our testing and supported content, I definitely did notice that. And I think the speakers are an impressive quality of this iMac. I think whether you're like listening to music or watching a movie, you're gonna be really satisfied with the quality of multimedia that this iMac is able to deliver. And I definitely noticed that through my casual music listening that I didn't really need a speaker. And a lot of times if you just want like the most minimal desk setup, I think this right here is like a really good all-in-one machine just because it looks good. It has a good audio quality, it has a great camera as well. So the intention is almost just to have this iMac on your desk or in your living room and nothing else around it. So at the end of the day, what do I think about the M1 iMac 24 inch? And am I going to keep it? Am I going to use it as my daily computer? And what are the things that I don't like about it? So for starters, yes, this is a computer that I have a lot of confidence in and I'm really excited to use it as one of my main editing machines. In fact, I ordered two of them and it's been back ordered for like a month and this one finally came in. But after using the blue one that Apple initially sent us, I was already really happy with it and I had my main video editor utilize it as well. And he seemed to really enjoy the experience. And that was coming 
coming from an iMac Pro that costs a lot more money and has like a lot more crazy specs on paper. But he actually mentioned that the iMac 24 inch was able to handle all the things that we typically do just fine and that he didn't really notice any performance difference. He was able to like go about like the whole cutting and color grading and also using DaVinci as well. And even though there were a few crashes here and there, it wasn't any more than what he was experiencing on the iMac Pro before. On the display side, I would say like it is a really good size. And for like the smaller desks in the office especially, I think this is gonna look really, really sharp. I also do like the display size actually. At a 4.5K resolution with like a 24 inch screen size, you do have a ton of real estate to work with and have a lot of programs open. And with the smaller bezels, the computer still has like a relatively small footprint, which is really convenient in an office like this where there isn't that much space in terms of how large each desk is because there is four of them. I also do think the video quality is really, really good. And even though like the actual quality itself of the camera is not always important in like a conference call where it's very casual, I feel like the cameras on the MacBook Air are so bad that people can really tell that it's like not on a smartphone or like that the quality is just noticeably not good when it's in 720p. And this right here is not only good, but it's actually very good. The dynamic range is definitely there and whether I have like a large window behind me, it is able to really separate that and the ISP is really noticeable. Um, the microphone quality is decent, nothing crazy in my opinion, but the speaker quality is good enough to the point where I'm not gonna need any external speakers. So when it comes to like the power design and display for the price that I paid for this machine, I think it is gonna be a very trusty video editing computer and I definitely plan to try to bring it when I travel once that becomes a thing and if I can find a case for it, even though that sounds crazy once again. But what are some of the things that I don't exactly like about this iMac? First off, I'm not a big fan of the white bezel. I wish they had like a matte black option where the whole thing was just completely black, but unless you go ahead and buy like a $600 dbrand skin, that is not an option. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but I do think like overall, the white bezel is not as bad as I thought, but it's just not my favorite. One thing that I don't like about it though is the chin. And I just feel like it looks really plain. Maybe if it had an Apple logo there, it would have looked good, or if they like kept it metal. It is just like a big glass slab on the front. And even though it looks very clean and simple and like uniform, if you pick like a color of iMac that has like a weird pastel color, it doesn't look as good. So I think if they did like an Apple logo or just like turn it into like a speaker grill or something like that, then at least would have had like a functionality side to it, but not having a bezel at all and making the computer thicker, even by double, would have been a better idea in my opinion. The other complaint that I have is also the port setup. And two is just like ridiculous. Like even on the MacBook Air and for like a light user, you're not really gonna enjoy having two ports only. But I do think even four for the upgraded model is a little bit thin and I would have at least liked to have seen five or six ports, even if they were all USB type C. I think having an SD card slot would have been nice as well because there are rumors that that's going to be coming back to the MacBook Pro this year. The only other like kind of complaint that I have though is that this is definitely not the largest display. So a lot of times people are gonna have issues with like ergonomics of it being too low and wanting to rise it and there is no height adjustability. I know all the iMacs in the past didn't either, but I think after seeing the XDR hinge and how it's like set up in a certain way where you have a little bit of pivot, it would have been nice to have just a bit of height adjustability on this iMac as well. But I know I'm being a little bit nitpicky. But otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you think down in the comment section below, and I'll see you all in the next one.